WMD every Saturday at 4.30 p.m. It's, it's interesting, being out here in California, people talk about this all the time. Uh, there, there are many states where this is already allowed, medicinal marijuana use. What do doctors really typically most likely prescribe marijuana for? Are there certain conditions? And how, how, do, how do people know what those conditions are? Well, the, you know, the main indications for using medicinal cannabis are to decrease nausea and to stimulate appetite. It also can be used for chronic pain. It's particularly good for neuropathic pain, the sort of pins and needles uh, that the opiates aren't very good at treating. Uh, it's also a good muscle relaxer. And uh, it's an anti-inflammatory and a free radical scavenger, uh, and it also helps quite a bit with autoimmune disorders, sort of regulating the immune system. So it can be used for a whole host of uh, uh, medical indications and psychiatric indications as well. You know, it, it's, it's interesting, and I think the, the, the tagline sort of when you think about marijuana use, uh, especially here in California, is that doctors uh, may not always be the most scrupulous when it comes to prescribing it. They prescribe it for all sorts of different things. What is your impression? I mean, it, it, it's, it's gotten a, a bad rap in that sense. Is there, is there good record keeping? How diligent do you think uh, many of these doctors are? Well, I think, you know, there's a spectrum like anything else. I think that there are many doctors who take their responsibilities very seriously, and I think that there are probably a good handful of unscrupulous physicians who know that it's an a easy way to make money. Now, as a medication, if you think about medicinal marijuana, does it seem to make a difference how people would actually take this medication, whether they smoke it yes. or, or use it as a vaporizer? Uh, what's the difference? It does make a difference. Um, first of all, I think that if you have any sort of uh, you know, predisposition to lung problems, if you've got diminished pulmonary function, then you would want to either use a vaporizer or eat the cannabis instead of smoking it. Um, you know, the issue with eating it is that you actually create a new drug. Uh, THC, which everybody knows is the component in cannabis that makes you feel altered, but is also the medicine. When you eat it, your liver breaks THC down into another uh, component called 11-hydroxy-THC, and that can feel a little bit more disorienting or psychedelic. So typically when you eat pot, it gets you a little bit more altered than when you smoke it. And also, it lasts much longer when you eat it. So if you want to be able to titrate your dose, you're better off smoking or vaporizing than eating it. But, you know, the other thing that's happening a lot now, Sanjay, which is interesting, is that people are juicing the whole plant. And what's good about juicing the whole plant is you don't get high. You get all the medicinal effects from the plant, but you don't become altered. Um, and because it's illegal and so expensive, you really can't juice the whole plant in many other states in the country. But if this were a medicine, you would have that option. Hmm. So there are ways to get the medicinal benefits of the plant without being altered. And I think that needs to be explored. There was a recent study, final question, a recent study that talked about uh, marijuana use in, in young people and saying if you use it uh, as a young person, it was more likely to have longer term impact in terms of memory degradation and things like that. Didn't see that so much as in adults. But Dr. Holland, right. I mean, what worries you the most about all this? Are there, are there certain concerns? Yeah, there are definitely concerns. Um, you know, one thing is that, you know, kids in their late teens, early 20s, their, their brains are really vulnerable and susceptible to psychiatric illness. It's a particularly delicate time in, in brain formation. So, you know, I mean, one good thing about, about regulating cannabis is that you would actually potentially have fewer children using. I mean, right now you ask any kid and it's pretty easy for them to get pot. Uh, you know, dealers don't card. But if things are regulated, you know, the hope is that it would actually have fewer children using. I mean, you can look at other countries like the Netherlands where actually they've got much better statistics on, you know, teen drug use than we do. Right, right. Well, uh, Dr. Holland, I hope to have you back. We do want to look at some of these studies as well and uh, hopefully have a longer discussion at some point. Uh, Dr. Julie Holland, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah.